I was running a little bit behind. Um, I had to take the dogs out. And so um, they're kind of wrestling in the other room. So hopefully we won't be interrupted too badly. Malachi already had to come in to tell me that they were doing something that they shouldn't be. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> so if you are here, I'm going to just refresh. I brought in um, Jeff's laptop um, to hopefully, hi Kayla, um, to hopefully be able to read comments while I'm crafting tonight. Um, so hopefully it will work. Um, I gave a little sneak peek picture, um, as to what we're going to work on tonight and I forgot to get us a fresh surface. Um, and I'm actually taking inspiration from our catalog in these projects right here. So, um, this stamp set is actually on page 158 and so this gives, hi Johnny, this gives a little bit um, more close up and it's reversed now, but it should be fine when we're when we're going. But so these are the projects that we're gonna work on tonight. And I actually did not even look up what items they used or anything, I'm just guessing. Um, and some of them I've changed based off of what um, what I have or what I thought it was. So I learned some things when I was practicing that we will be able to hopefully fix the problems that I was having. Um, I learned that um, when using the stays on ink, which is the ink that is best for watercoloring, um, you um, will stain your stamparatus if you get ink on it. So I learned that it is probably going to take me something a little bit more than just water or um, cleaning solution or my stamp and mist or whatever to get those tiny little things off. It's not awful, but I learned, so it's okay. And if I can learn, it'll stop somebody else from making that mistake. So hi, Julianne. Um, so super helpful. And I thought it's okay that I'm learning this way because now I can just share what I'm learning with you guys too. Hi Shelly. So we're going to work on those three projects. Um, I did not have a couple of the things that they used. Um, so I've swapped them out for um, things that I already had that I thought worked. Um, and I think that I'm mostly ready. So I'm going to put you up um, over the top. Hi Susan and Lauren. Um, and then we will get started. So here we go. Okay. Now I practiced this. So hopefully the... Turn you off? Okay. I thought I turned you off. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. So we'll see how it's doing here. And then I'm going to move this up just a hair. And then I'm just going to make sure that I can read comments quick. I am not a pro at his computer. So we're just kind of playing this by ear. The iPad did not work last time. Awesome. It's, it's working. Yay. Um, okay. So I thought I would show you um, the... The projects one here in the catalog, they're on page 59. Um, the first one that I worked on was this one. So this card right here. Um, and I used um, Grapefruit Grove. And I'm pretty sure that they either used Petal Pink or it just looks a lot lighter um, if, you, if you see them right next to each other. Um, but I think that the gems that they used in this one are from the faceted gems of the Grapefruit Grove, um, in our catalog. So it can't be off too much. I think mine probably is just going to look a little bit darker, um, anyway, but, um, I used the stays on ink and I used, um, my stamp, stamparatus 
And it, the, here's, here's the exciting part that I learned. Uh, when you line up your grass at the bottom, you can move it over one hinge step to have it right in place for the next piece. So that was something that I thought was super, super fun that I was really excited to share with you. Um, for my white cardstock, I am actually using the thick Whisper White because I knew that I wanted to do some watercoloring and so I wanted the thickness to hold up fairly well. Um, I did find that it kind of um, gives a little bit of, it just like watermarks. Um, I don't think it looks bad and actually I used um, my um, tissue to kind of brush it to see if it was just water sitting there and it kind of caused the stays on to kind of streak a little bit, but I don't think it looks bad enough for me to discard it completely. So I used um, these little, oh goodness, and I'm not gonna be able to remember, um, the little Share What You Love Artesian Pearls instead of the faceted gems that they used in the catalog uh, because they're the same color um, and I felt like they, they did the job pretty decent. Um, and then I used copper. I think that that is what they used here. Um, but again, I didn't look it up. So I'm just going to go, go through what I used for my project. The second one that I did, I did a little bit differently than theirs because they use, um, the man on the bicycle. And I just feel like that needs its own special place and I'm probably not going to send out a card with the man with the bicycle but I really thought the butterflies looked super super pretty um, and so I kind of swapped the man on the bicycle out for the little butterflies um, so um, I used co the colors that I used were the lovely lipstick and the pineapple punch and again I think that they may have used something with a little bit more reddish hues um, but I really liked um, the way that the pink and the yellow went together. It was really more of a, a brighter version. And I think theirs might actually be like a crush curry. Um, but I thought that that pineapple punch looked super, super pretty with that. And um, so this one, you can tell I, I learned a little bit from the hinge step on the grass. Um, that's one hinge step with my Stamparatus. Um, that it looks a little bit more seamless. Um, another thing that I think um, that I want to try differently that I learned with um, these cards is on the third one. Um, the third card, um, because I'm not using stays on and I'm using the Knight of Navy ink, it reacts to the water. And so I wasn't really thinking about it beforehand and I stamped it first. And I don't think that it came out bad. Um, I just know that it has more of the bluish on the bottom um, than I was kind of looking for, I suppose. I wanted to have more of the, the Bermuda Bay down at the bottom. So what we're going to do, and I'm hoping that it dries quick enough. If it doesn't, then I'll have to get out my heat tool. But um, we're going to watercolor this card first. And then hopefully by the time we are finished with these other two, it will be ready for us to stamp the Knight of Navy over the top of it. Um, and then the other change that I did with this card is I don't have that, that label punch that they use here. Here, I'll bring it a little bit closer. Um, that label punch. So I used the two and a quarter circle just like I did on the um, I Miss You card that was right here. Um, and then I also did not have the little um, embellishments of the leaves. So I took um, the framelit from the, oh goodness, I'm going to have to pull it out. I took the support ribbon framelits and I used the leaf that is in um, that, that set um, for my little leaves. And I felt like it, it did the job. Um, it was just different enough, but similar. Um, and then I also decided that I wanted to use the Grapefruit Grove for my sentiment and the thread um, because I had both of those 
um, in my in my collection in my collection of goodies so those are the projects that I practiced to work on tonight and hopefully I have worked out all of my little kinks um, things that I've learned um, when I was making them I did cut out um, a bunch of things already because I knew that it would probably take me a little bit of time um, just for all the little prep work um, for this little um, punch thing here I used the triple or banner triple punch um, to make that little notch in there and I don't actually know that they did it when they um, created the catalog samples but I had a bunch of fun making them and I think they came out super cute um, and I absolutely love that I could do them all with this one stamp set, this Enjoy Life photopolymer stamp set. So um, one of my favorite things um, to do is to see how many different ways I can use the one set. So when I used the PS You're the Best for our last Facebook Live just a couple weeks ago, um, I thought it was so fun to showcase that one set to do all of the different projects. Um, I apologize again that it took me so long to post them online. Um, I have just been crazy busy these last couple weeks with vacation, and we actually had little to no internet um, at our family reunion so it was it was not what I was expecting um, but I had a blast with my family and it was really hard to send send them all home on Monday night and Tuesday morning um, so I feel like I've just been playing catch up from that point on so we are going to get started and I'm gonna grab the first card like I said I cut out most of our little pieces and I think I'm going to try to zoom zoom in just a tad and hopefully um I'm sorry if that's shaking you all over the place I'll try to calm it down um I since I cleaned my house and I got all of my normal um area all cleaned out um because of company coming um, I moved it all to our guest room space and we have, um, <laughs> we've enjoyed having that extra free space in my living room where I usually have my craft stuff all set up. And so I figured that since we don't have company coming for a, for a little while now, um, that I would... Um, I would see if I could keep it in this room for the time being. So I am going to try to follow along with any comments on the laptop here. There is a little bit of a lag. So you guys, if you could bear with me, I will try really hard. I hope it focuses. It looked a little bit blurry for a while. Um, and that the light isn't too, too bright. Maybe I'll move it a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to start with this Bermuda Bay ink, and what I'm doing is I'm, this is the old ink pad. Um, I'm probably going to keep my old design, um, unless for some reason I add ink pads here and there to, um, to, to orders that have um, Stampin' Rewards and things like that. I do have an order coming. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it will be here. By this weekend but I am not gonna plan on it because I haven't got my confirmation email yet that it is shipped or anything so what I'm doing is I'm I just squeezed this together um, and then I'm gonna open it but I'm not gonna slide this through I'm just gonna leave it open because we're gonna use that ink in there with our aqua painter to watercolor a little bit um, and if you guys know me at all which a lot of you do and have followed me for a while. You know how much I love, love watercoloring. It is probably one of my most favorite things to do as far as techniques go. And so we are just going to take this um, aqua painter. I put a little bit of water in my ink to start with. 
Um, and if you can kind of see the little water spots and those aren't a huge deal to me, um, uh, but I think that, um, on the thick, um, whisper white cardstock that it doesn't take any of the thickness away. Um, it just cause, causes it to raise up a little bit. Um, so if you don't want that to happen, then I, I would um, recommend just having a watercolor paper um, layer for that just so that it, and I think this is going to dry in no time, so I don't think we're going to have any trouble at all um, filling that in um, and having it done by the time we're ready to put our Night of Navy on. So I'm going to put actually a little bit more, let me see, I'm going to just use a, Crinkled up, crinkled up um, Kleenex. It looks a little bit darker in the video, I'm noticing. So I'm just going to give it a little bit more ink in the lid and do a little bit darker on the bottom here um, because we're going to put our Knight of Navy over, over the top of that. And so I think that that'll look super pretty. So, what's everybody up to this week? I get to jump back in to a full, full normal week, which I'm kind of excited about. Um, I only had my extra kiddos one day this last week um, because of our vacation, which was wonderful as far as vacation goes that it, I wasn't rushing back after having family gone. Um, but it definitely is something that I'm looking forward to having, having them back and working my normal hours in the church office. It, um, I love how, how I get to spread my time out that way. So I, oh, it was having a, uh, alert on my phone. So I'm going to close up my aqua painter and just leave it here because we're going to actually use it on all three cards, which was kind of a perk as far as um, which card I wanted to design or work on, not design, um, wanted to work on with you guys tonight because um, it's just, it's such a fun technique and I love it. So now while this is drying just a little bit, we are going to stamp our sentiment on um, on our circle. And this is the newer um, ink pad, and so you kind of flip it up like a compact. And mine are still a little bit sticky and take a little bit more encouragement as far as sliding into place, but I love them. And I am so excited to get the other colors that are coming. I ordered a couple of the newer colors that um, I don't have yet. So I'm super excited. I got the Poppy Parade, um, which is a really, really fun red color. And I got the Granny Apple Green because, you know, green, I love the greens. And then Coastal Cabana are the ink pads that I got um, with my Stampin' Rewards. I just could not wait any longer <laughs> to make an order. I did not make an order the entire month of June with my family reunion coming. Uh, I just knew that I wanted to hold off just in case the money wasn't all there that I needed for that reunion. Okay, so what I did is I took my clear block with the sentiment that they used on this card, which is how beautiful a day can be when kindness touches it. And I just stamped that right on the center of that. So to close it, you just kind of push that um, left side and then pull on this one. I will tell you that the blue that comes later in this card did cause me to have quite blue fingers and it just is a little bit less now, but my goodness, last night before bed, I feel like I was a hot mess. 
Um, Jeff asked me what was on my fingers. So if that tells you anything at all. So I actually have my Stampin' Chamois um, close by. So I'm just cleaning off my stamp with my chamois. It is already well loved. It was almost clean on this until last night. So um, I absolutely love it. It is probably one of my most favorite things that they have in the new catalog. Um, so if you need a super easy, quick cleaning surface, it is amazing. Um, and I will recommend it to anyone. Um, so that is our little piece here. And what I actually did for the um, little bow-ish thing on the back, I kind of tried to do it in my hand first because if you can see in, in the card, um, it almost looks like it's a bow that's just kind of been put as close to that edge as possible that you can see the loops and you can see the little... Uh, pieces sticking out. That's what it looked like in the catalog. I'll show you that too. Um, with that green um, twine there. Um, but let me just tell you that if you don't, if you don't do a bow, like a real bow, and you're just trying to loop and gather, <laughs> it is comical trying to get it to look exactly like you wanted it to. But so I did not make a bow the first time and I'm not super great at bows but I literally like took the twine flipped it kind of weird that way and then did another loop here and then I literally like folded down the other piece and that is what I did for measuring how I wanted my twine to be and I trimmed it I'm gonna just show you exactly what I did to show you how hilarious this process was for me. I'm just using some kitchen tape um, to adhere this down and we're actually gonna put it on over here. And so I'm, I'm just flipping, flipping what I've done, taking it with my fingers, sliding it just a hair on to the card itself like really hilariously, if that tells you anything, just to have that middle piece. I just want the loops to be down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redo that part as you guys giggle at me for how ridiculous this looks. Um, and I'm going to take my kitchen tape <laughs> and I just put the teeniest little piece of tape just so that it holds it into place while I add my little dimensionals because once it's down it's not gonna go anywhere and it kind of can be moved however I need it to be and so it just as silly as that looks on the back I felt like nobody's gonna see the back and um, the only people that know how hilarious that was to put together are me and all of you now. So <laughs> it can be fun to work on that. Um, so actually to put these little silver leaves on, I'm actually using an old paper pumpkin, um, bit of glue dots. And I did have my, my paper piercer, actually, it's right here. I knew I had it close by. Julian, I'm so with you. I love that sentiment. I feel like it is a sentiment that I could use in my own life, like, every single day. Um, I need to be reminded often about being kind and just showing, showing that kindness to my children and... Um, I can be a grouchy mom a lot of the time, and so it is a, a big encouragement to, to me to have that reminder um, to share with them. So what I did there is I just put the, the leaf um, on the back there, and I'm going to put the other two down in this corner. I think I did it reversed for the last card that I did, um, but... I didn't do it 100% how they did it in the catalog anyway, so I didn't feel like it was that big of a deal. 
So what I'm doing is I'm just taking off these backings. Um, I actually saw somebody um, on our team page, I think maybe, ask if we carried these sheets um, in our catalog because, oh, the, the color in the background is Bermuda Bay, Susan. Um, I didn't check um, our list that we have um, on our demonstrator website to see what items they used um, in the cards. I just kind of took my what I thought they might be and kind of went with it that way. So that is how our sentiment will be. And we are going to pop that, pop that up with some dimensionals. Um, so, yeah, so I saw someone ask about those glue dots and ask if we could buy them um, in the in the catalog and they are only used with the paper pumpkin kit. So uh, I, I don't often use them and so I figured I have my cute little embellishment box from the Share What You Love um, promotion that they had um, in, I think it was even in April, um, that it came with all these things in the embellishment kit but then the promotion came with the doilies and the pearls and I've just kind of been keeping them all in here for for safekeeping and I figured how perfect would it be to have a little thing of those glue dots already in that box if in case I wanted to work on a project or something so I moved it from a paper pumpkin kit to that little box and it has come in handy more than one time now so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit this over here to the side, and I love how that Grapefruit Grove looks on that card. So this Bermuda Bay is mostly dry, and so I'm going to get our really pretty tall stems out. And one of the things that I noticed in the catalog is that pull it out for you and show you is that in theirs they have the stems going up a little bit higher um, on there and so I actually am gonna do that one first and then do the lower um, stems but I think they're so so pretty and that Knight of Navy looks fantastic on the Bermuda Bay so I love loved how that came out and I was kind of excited to do more than one um, card um, if, of each of these designs because I just think that they, um, they're they a little bit more detailed than I think I'd probably go um, when making a card. And I don't often actually even do just one single layer. So that was a little bit of a challenge too. So what I'm doing here um, is I just am taking my Knight of Navy on my photopolymer stamp and I'm using my piercing mat for um, a little bit of cushion um, because I'm not using the Stamparatus for this card. Um, I I tried it last night and it was it was okay, but I found that I was moving I was moving the stamp a little bit more than I wanted to. Um, so I'm gonna take Actually, I'm going to fold up this scratch paper and put it under here just to give me that extra, <laughs> extra little bit of coverage. Um, so I'm going to take my stamp, put it over the top there, and I'm going to actually even do a little bit of the little stems coming off the side so that it looks a little bit more like it has friends on the side. So I was super excited to come back and create with you um, this week. Um, I always think about it on the days that I miss, but we had 24 people from my family in our house last week, so it would have been nutso to go live and show show the chaos that was my house 
for two days, but I loved every single minute of it. And um, those moments that I get to share with my family and my siblings are so, so dear to my heart. Um, so I was very, very thankful to get to have each of those moments um, to share with them. And there's 10 grandbabies that all got to be together under one roof. And, um, that's something that, um, blesses my mama. Um, so, so very much. Oh, I need it for the bird. I forgot, um, to have all of, all of us under one roof together. Um, that fills up her mama tank so much. So I'm just taking my stamp and I'm just kind of twisting it on my stamp and chamois. And we will clean that right up there and set it aside. I think that is the last time that we used that stamp. So I'm just going to put it back on my clear page here. And now I'm going to put the little birdie um, kind of here where you can see him a little bit more. Um, and then put him on my clear block. I can hear my puppy outside the door, so I hope they don't get super, super loud. So I'm going to put it right there. Sorry if my forehead went into the frame. Um, might have to give him a little bit of... I don't know, he's kind of floating in midair there. I didn't go down quite as far as I wanted to, but it will be okay. I don't have to be super crazy picky about it. It'll be all right. So there's our, our little bird. And so I'm going to put this little stamp away so that I don't lose it because those little stamps tend to have legs and walk away from us. Um, so now, since that card is mostly, yeah, it's like dry. It's like buckling. So I will probably put this underneath some really heavy books to kind of flatten it out um, before, before I send it away. But I'm just going to take the backings off of my dimensionals and throw them away in my little bin over here. It's kind of been nice to have all of my little crafty things all set up and I can just come back to it. Oh, that's perfect. I almost like that one better with the placement of the bird. So we are going to put that right there. And that is our first official card that we worked on. This is the one I did earlier. And so you can tell the difference in the color for sure. So I did the watercoloring after I stamped this first one. Um, and so most of the watercoloring on the bottom shows more of the Knight of Navy from our stems than it does um, on this one. So that is the difference. Um, tips for me, do the watercoloring first and then stamp your image. <laughs> so I learned on almost every single one of my cards um, little mistakes that I made that I got to correct. So I also like the placement of my leaves being kind of the opposite, um, on that second card. So there's the card number one. And I did not, I'm going to warn you now, I did not time myself on how long these projects took me. I like to, um, work on Let's see. I like to work on my projects while I'm watching other people craft and create. Hi, Ben. Good to have you. Um, so I'm often not paying attention to very, very much to what I'm working on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my little piercing mat aside and we are going to pull out the middle card that um, we're going to work on next. And actually, I might bring my scratch paper back in for this one. Um, we are going to use the Lovely Lipstick and the Pineapple Punch ink for both of these cards, or for this card specifically. 
Um, and then I will be using, on the last card, I am using Grapefruit Grove and So Saffron. So these newer ink pads, I have found that when you are trying to do the watercoloring and create that little um, pool of ink on the inside here, if I can get it, it is a lot more tricky as far as how much ink goes in. So you have to give it like a pretty decent squeeze um, to get much ink to go into it at all. Um, so that is one thing that I find is pretty different. But when you get it, um, the it does just what it's supposed to. Okay, so let me get out my little example here. I did um, the yellow first, the pineapple punch first on yesterday's card. Um, and I liked how when I did the lovely lipstick, it kind of went upwards into it. And so I'm going to try to get that um, for today's project as well. And I'm just going to make sure that my aqua painter is clean from our Bermuda Bay. And then I will come into our pineapple punch to grab some ink. Um, last night I had done it in the same order and I had a little bit more green in my <laughs> pineapple punch than I was wanting. And so I'm just going to take it and go up with it and not super picky about the coverage. Um, again, there will be those little water spots on the thick Whisper White cardstock. Um, but it's not a huge, huge deal. Um, if it bothers you um, to have that um, on your paper, um, then I would just recommend the, the watercolor paper that Stampin' Up! carries is amazing and um, worth every penny uh, that it costs. I wish that they came in, in the normal A... Um, eight and a half by 11 um, sizes, but um, for for what we pay for them, um, I know that that's much more cost effective to have them in those smaller sizes um, so that we can get um, a more cost effective amount. Um, it probably wouldn't sell as much <laughs> if, if they had the the bigger amounts for more expensive. So what I'm gonna do while the yellow is drying and since I still have my pineapple punch out, I'm gonna put my piercing mat underneath my circle here and I'm gonna slide that together there and I'm gonna get out my sentiment um, to stamp it while I have my ink out still and so we are going to put on the, I don't think I could more than I already do. Um, and then we're going to put the miss you in the middle. Um, this stamp set, the enjoy life stamp set has some of the best sentiments, um, as far as having, I think, I think I like every single one of the sentiments that come in this, in this set. The thank you kindly, um, and then the sentiment that we're going to use on the last card, um, as well as um, love you to go in the place in the middle. We're going to use miss you, but you could put love you into that space. And I think that is so, so fun. And then this stamp says wake up, kick butt, repeat. And I think that is of all of the stamps that came in that set, that probably is the one that is the most out of place. As far as sentiments go, um, but I can totally see myself using it in a project that I'm making for my kids or um, an encouragement to a coworker or something, um, just to pump them up and get them get them ready to keep going. Um, so I think it's super fun, and um, I know that this was. This stamp set was created by one of the Million Dollar Sales Achievers, and her name is Connie Fitzgerald. Um, so I think that her set is probably 
Um, I, I would say it's probably one of my more favorite um, stamp sets as far as the art is, uh, or the million dollar sales achiever sets. Um, there are a couple of sets that I have. I did get the Ribbon of Courage um, one, but I don't have many of them, so this one definitely caught my eye, and I'm super, super glad that I got it. So we're going to use the Lovely Lipstick, and before we do our watercoloring, I'm going to do our sentiment here, um, since I have it, my my little piercing mat out already. So one thing that I will show you is that in that it does cover a little bit of the phrase on the bottom, but I that doesn't bother me all that that much. So I am not. I'm not going to shift what I'm going to do based off of that. So I'm going to clean my stamp and put that back with the rest of them. And then I'm going to close up my lovely lipstick and give that a good squeeze there. So I hope that, that you guys are having a good Sunday today. We had a wonderful day at church, and um, it was it was nice being back after vacation and getting to worship with our church family again. So um, I hope you were able to do the same um, wherever you are. Have that wonderful Sunday. Um, so I'm just putting some water into my lid here with the rest of my ink. <clears throat> And I'm going to start kind of in the midpoint for the richness um, and then kind of go up from here because our little butterflies that we're going to do are going to come in there, um, kind of do a little bit more flowy, flowy color. Um, I went up a little bit higher in this, in this one because... Um, I felt like um, this area over here kind of gets covered up by the the sentiment and the grass and so it doesn't matter too too much um, but I I thought that this color combo was super super fun together um, the I feel like this this set of in colors definitely is one that you could use all five five colors together in a project and nobody would bat an eye because of how well they work together um, so I'm just gonna clean up my my lid here um, and close up that lovely lipstick and then we're gonna actually let that dry just a little bit more and so let's pull out our our next background that is this one and we are going to do our watercoloring for that project so that's this one and so again I did the so saffron and then the grapefruit grove in the background there so that way, this one will have a little bit more time to dry as well. So I'm going to do the So Saffron first for this one. And then we'll finish up with the Grapefruit Grove. There we go. That one had quite a bit still in it. So we are going to put the So Saffron on the bottom. And I, I think it's such a soft, pretty, pale yellow color. Um, I have used it in way more projects than I thought. I am not a super huge fan of the yellow hues in any ink, really. <laughs> like, yellow is just not my favorite color. Um, I used to not even own any clothing that were yellow or anything either, but had a couple of moments of finding how fun that 
mustard yellow color can be in the fall and it's kind of helped me to get out of my box a little bit, not a ton, just a little, <laughs> as far as my fear of color goes. Um, but we are going to use this Grapefruit Grove. Let me see, that did hardly anything. You have to really squeeze hard, and I keep thinking I'm gonna snap the case in half, but it really doesn't. So they're really, they're really strong and can go quite a ways with things like that. So, so we're gonna start in the middle and kind of fade, fade upward in that grapefruit grove color. And I kind of want it to just, um, we'll go down just a little bit into the so saffron color. And that is our watercolor. So those um, watercoloring parts go fairly quickly when it comes to um, just how hard or difficult it is to create that background. It what it, They're not super, super difficult um, to do. Um, and I'm just going to set that ink aside and we will do the other piece here in a second. So we are going to leave my background paper out and this page is mostly dry. So we're going to get out our stays on ink, which is the jet black stays on ink. And I will tell you that until yesterday, I'm not even sure I had used it ever because, um, I thought stays on was more for using on glass or, um, things that it is just going to stain forever. And so I was a little bit intimidated by the permanent part, I guess, <laughs> if that says anything, I was a little bit afraid to use it because of how permanent it is. Um, I will tell you that as soon as I opened it, I kind of liked the smell of the ink, which is super bizarre to me. Um, and I'm going to try to not put my head over, over so you can see it. I'm going to hold that down at the bottom. Um, I'm not even sure what I would compare the smell of the stays on ink to. It reminds me of food, if that tells you anything. I really have no idea what kind of food. Um, so that paper is a little bit wet still. Um, but because it's photopolymer, we can go back in um, with the ink again. I am a little bit nervous to use my Stamparatus for tonight um, just because of... There we go. Because of the fact that I stained it a little bit, I just want to make sure that I practice a little bit. But because they're photopolymer, it works. So um, if you bear with me, um, we are going to finish this one with no trouble. Um, so I am going to hold that down and just rub my finger over the top. And with the photopolymer, it is super helpful to have this piercing, piercing mat um, underneath it just to kind of give it that extra cushion, um, especially with things like this that, um, perfect. And now if you can see on the bottom of my card, I'm going to show you a little bit of a tip just for tonight. Um, you can see a little bit of the pink there on the bottom. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do for that. I'm flipping our grass upside down and going over the bottom with just that solid black line, just over the, the edge, just making sure that all that bottom part is covered in that black ink. And then we don't have any pink showing at the bottom. So there's a little tip for me to you. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take my Stampin' Chamois and I will tell you that this stays on, stays on, hi mama, the stays on is going to stain your stamps and that is okay. Um, you just clean them as you normally would and, um, that will 
help them. We do have a stays on cleaner um, that is actually on its way to my house because that tells you that I have not used it a ton. Um, but I know that it's going to stain my stamps and that is okay with me. Um, but um, to get the images cleaned properly, that cleaner is super, super helpful um, for your stamps, just as far as preserving them and keeping them nice longer. So we are just working on, this is our second card for the night. Um, but let me see where my example card is. There it is. So on this one, I did do five butterflies. One of them kind of got covered by my image there or my sentiment. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of keep that in mind because I like where that sentiment is, is sitting at, um, when I do this card. So we're going to take our little butterfly and we're going to put one of them down here. And I will tell you that as far as the stays on ink goes, I love how, um, how bold that black color is. I just, I think it comes out so, so crisp. Um, so that is those, that little butterfly cleaned it off and I'm going to put it away before I lose it. And then I have my other tiny little butterfly that we are going to add in a couple different places. One up here and I'm going to put one right here and I'm going to actually do another one kind of here. I It might get covered up but that'll be okay. Um, we will find out when we put our card together. So what we are going to do, I'm going to put my little stamp away and since we have our stays on out already, I'm going to sit this over here and I'm going to pull out our other image that we are going to use on our last card. And I'm going to get out the grass. And this one uses um, the grass as well as the little dandelions. I think they're dandelions. Um, and then the, the girl standing there. So this one has a little bit more um, to it, but we are going to use this to, um, to finish out this, this layer so that it has some time to dry. And I'm going to try really hard not to put my head over. All right, so I'm just going to push that down just a little bit. And that did pretty decent. And then the next one, right. It's hard to see <laughs> so that I'm not like putting my whole head in the frame. And, and then we'll finish it off with a little bit on that side. Perfect, I love how that worked. So I'm just cleaning my grass off on my chamois and making sure that it is clean. Putting my grass pieces away here. Okay, so now we have the little dandelion piece here and we're gonna put that right over here. in that bottom left hand corner and then we just have our our girl and then we're done with our stays on ink so i i think i might actually try to use this stamp set for my scrapbook layout for later on this week on friday I have not 100% finished what I want to do. It'll probably be something from our family reunion, but I haven't decided 100% yet. Okay, so I'm gonna put our little, our standing girl right there. And I'm gonna give her a little bit of time to hopefully let, I'm sorry if I'm shaking you all over the place, to give that some time 
too dry and I kind of like how that looks but I'm gonna I'll go over one more time hopefully I can get her with I'm gonna put my head over just for a second I'm sorry okay we're gonna put her down right there I'm sorry <laughs> I just didn't want to get her wrong I hope that I'm close but that'll be a lovely view of my head I know you all wanted to see that all right so we are done with the stays on and so I can put that away. I'm going to clean off my little, my girl on my Stampin' Chamois. I'm just rubbing it down. Um, I will probably take a little bit more thorough cleaning um, with those when we're finished with my dish soap. Um, but I like the image that we have on that one too. So, oh, yep. There I'm seeing it. So sorry about my head in the frame. Wasn't quite as awkward as I thought it was going to be, but it's fine. It's fine. All right. So now that we are done with our water coloring, I'm going to move that over there and we can put the rest of this card together. Hopefully my fingers aren't totally stained. They're a little bit dark, but not bad. Okay, so we are going to use our, I'm gonna use the tear and tape that we have uh, because I don't have, um, now that Fast Fuse is not in our catalog anymore, um, you kind of need something because of it, it being watercolored and it's kind of buckling, you kind of need something that is going to hold it down fairly tight. And so the tear and tape is a great um, adhesive as far as that goes um, for holding for holding down the layers um, easier. So we're gonna go around the edges of that and hopefully um, hopefully I can get them all fairly well um, I would normally use my ATG gun um, to to adhere these and probably give them a little bit more adhesive than not um, but this tear and tape is amazing and super cost effective. So, um, I definitely recommend, um, for, for any of your crafting things that you're looking for, um, for boxes that you're making or, um, layouts that have a lot of layers that are embossed. Um, this tear and tape is amazing. And I mean, I've had this role for ages and, it does the job. So I'm going to use that for my adhesive of choice um, as far as this goes. And hopefully I haven't covered up all of my, my ways to actually leave my adhesive on there. I'm just picking apart. Okay, I'm going to use my piercing tool and hopefully get it so that it leaves the adhesive down. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Um, the adhesive did not want to stay down. There we go. And I'll just push that adhesive back down. I had a couple of overlapping pieces and that's why it was having trouble. Um, so I'm just using my piercing tool here to pull up the backing of that adhesive and that helps a ton as far as finishing off this layer. Uh, but I just don't want it to pop up on the card because of it being watercolored. So this, I'm very thankful that we have a an adhesive that will still um, work for big projects like this. So what I'm doing is this has a little bit of a, a border around it. Um, but it's not super, super big. Um, so 
I'm going to try to get as close to it as I can. But I love how we are layering it on, on the white, um, the Whisper White um, cardstock there. So what I'm going to do with this sentiment is I kind of started by making that there and then um, do a little loop on that side. And I cut it already, and I could tell you how long it is if that helps, but um, it's super, super simple to just go through it like that. That's how I did it. So this is almost 11 inches of our, um, this is the shimmer ribbon that is basic black. So we are going to use that on this card and I'm going to do our little loopy there and then loopy there and then what I do is I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to use a piece of kitchen tape to put that down on there and I'm going to do an, one more piece because that one wasn't quite as long as I thought it was going to be. And there is what I did to adhere that down. So now that we have that the way we want it, I just am going to use some dimensionals. Probably two on the top, one in the middle. Because it's taped down, it's not going to raise it up too, too bad. And then we are going to put these, take our little backings off. For our dimensionals we're gonna go a little bit late it looks like for this for this one but all right we are gonna put that one right there and then I'm going to trim our ribbon on both sides with my paper snips that are a little bit sticky apparently. So that is card number two finished and ready. So that one came out super, super pretty. Um, here is my side by side. So this is the one that I did today and then this is the one that I did yesterday as a practice. So I think they came out really well and happy with that. And now we're gonna finish up our last card. So we've already started, we already did a lot of the hard part um, already with our watercoloring. Um, so let's do our sentiment really quick with our Grapefruit Grove. So I'm going to just open this up like normal since we're all done with the watercoloring part and we will do the stamping on the back of our image as well as the sentiment. So we'll do the center first. So we're going to go a little bit over the time that I usually do um, on this live. But I'm glad that I prepped everything that I did. Otherwise, we would be here forever, forever and ever. Um, so we're just going to put our sentiment at the top side of our piece of cardstock. And... Then we are going to take our banner triple punch. And what I did with this last one is I just like fed it in. And it's not the perfect, perfect size um, to do, but I kind of tried to make it as straight so that it had the same amount on both, on both sides. And I just popped it like that. And then it came out just like that. So that is our sentiment with our watercolored image. So now what we're gonna do is after I clean my sentiment off, we will put that one away and grab our, our little stems again. I forgot we used them on this one. And so we just are gonna do one on each side of our um, card here. And so you, it's kind of like a tone on tone um, 
image. And so we're just gonna have a little bit on both sides. So there is where that one will be. And we're gonna cover up the middle part and so you won't even really see it. So it's not a huge, huge thing, but it just adds a little bit of interest to the sides. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can always tell when I had a nap because <laughs> I'm a little bit groggy still when I wake up. But I love my Sunday naps, and so right now I'm, I'm not willing to sacrifice them to not have grogginess in the evenings because I love them so much. All right, so I'm gonna clean up my stamp and then we will finish putting this card together. So, super, super cute. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just leave it on like this and we will do a little bit more of our tear and tape for this one because we used the watercoloring again. So we're gonna put that one there just tear it and then I'll put it here and tear it there and then we will do it again here and tear it and then We are going to do that last side and then we'll do a strip in the middle as well. There. And so we're just gonna go diagonal. That will do the job. So that is the tear and tape. I'm gonna grab my little piercing tool and kind of convince it that it wants to come up. All right, and I have my nice little handy trash can next to me. So that helps a lot as far as where to put all of my backings at. I even emptied out my trash can before I started tonight. So we are gonna put this layer. Now it's cut flush with the, um, with the card. So we're gonna just try to line it up in the middle, giving the same amount on each. Oh, I did it, I did it wrong. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it because it's a mistake that I made. So I was supposed to go the other way with my watercoloring um, so that it looks like this. So now you get to see the way that they meant for you to do it and the way that I did it for this time. So not a huge deal and I'm actually not even going to worry about it. But what I might do on this one is I might add a little bit more of our copper um, thread to the bottom just to kind of give interest over that grass. Um, but I'm not too super worried about it, so I may just leave it. It does not need to bother me that it's not perfect. So what I'm going to do with the thread, and I will tell you that... Um, the way that I did this had really no rhyme or reason to it either. It's just some looping that I did on the back of this piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tape, ooh, and then it's gonna roll away. Um, I'm going to tape down my thread here, and I'm really super sorry if this is going too long for some of you. Um, I know some if you're like me, you, you don't mind the length and you just enjoy crafting alongside. Um, but I know that for others, they really, they like them to be short and sweet. So if this is not your thing and you like them to be shorter, then there's tons out there that are for you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda hold the pinch in the middle and it's gonna loop around. That way, and I'm gonna pull it just like that. A little bit more on that side. I did not super have a rhyme or reason to it. 
Actually, I might pull out a whole bunch of thread and then do it. It's kind of, I didn't do it any specific way, but it probably could have been thicker is what I learned. Okay, so we'll trim this thread and then try to get it to look pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna just practice my little loops here. Like so, if I could hold it down. So that'll be one side, and then that'll be the other. And then it just kind of wants to do this naturally. So as long as my thread is listening to me, then it will work. <laughs> so I'm just, if you can see, there's really nothing fancy to what I'm doing. I'm just folding and then taking, taking that and pinching it underneath my index finger. Uh, there we go. It won't make, make a huge difference. So... I also am learning that it's hard to talk at the same time as doing this little project. <laughs> so I'm sorry that I'm not talking. Um, but I do like how thick I'm going to do these loops because I feel like that adds so much to it um, that I kind of like how many gathers they have on it. behind it. Ah. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tape, tape that under. And those who are still with me are troopers, <laughs> are the brave, the brave few that stayed with me this whole crazy time of me trying to do this all in one swoop. So, as I was saying earlier, I did not do this all at one time last night. It was, I worked on them in the afternoon and then I came back to them in the evening and then I actually finished them this afternoon after my nap. So, what you're getting to see is much longer um, spread out working on these projects so but I really enjoy it and I think they came out super cute so what we're gonna do now is we're going to add our little sentiment up here um, and it will hang off the little loops will um, and you can put those into your envelope the same same way you would any other card the card is still gonna be the same size so it's just the loops that would hang over um, so that's not a huge, huge deal, um, but I think it, I think it looks beautiful. So now we're going to take our little artisan pearls to add a couple to this card. I'm going to put one down there and one up there and one up here. And one in there, and then one here. So I think they came out super, super cute. Oh, hi, Norma. I'm glad you're here. Um, so that is take two with a little bit of a mistake. So mistakes are okay. Nobody would even know that I didn't do that on purpose. Unless they watch this, and then they will. <laughs> So here is the card that I made yesterday and here's the card that I made today to go along with our projects that were inspired by page 59 of our annual catalog. They are found on page 59 right there. Thank you. So I will pull out all of our projects that we worked on tonight. So we did three cards, um, each of them were cards that I practiced yesterday and then fixed little mistakes that I figured out 
Um, but with watercoloring, they want to buckle all weird right now. So I'm going to stick them under some books and maybe add a couple different stamps on the insides. But I'm really happy with how they came out. And um, I just wanted to show how um, helpful our catalogs are when it comes to what kind of cards we make if we're really just feeling like we're in a rut. Um, this catalog has so many, I mean, it's full. It's full of different projects um, to use. Um, and the next thing that I think I'm going to practice is showing you that if you like a card on one of the pages, you don't even have to use that same stamp set to create that card. You can use a different one and just be inspired by the layout of a card. Um, and so I might try to figure out how to do something like that on a later live. Um, that is one of the ways that I got started with making cards is I literally have stacks and stacks of these idea book and catalog. Um, well, that's what they used to call them. Now they call them Stampin' Up! Annual Catalogs. And I would look at these cards and put post-it notes next to the ones that I loved and say, I'm going to make this card. And if I didn't have the stamp set that it needed for that card, I would just use what I had. Um, and so um, the inspiration that we can find in those catalogs is so, so valuable to us. And so I hope you enjoyed um, watching me make these cards today and that you are inspired um, to create your own. Um, if you do have this stamp set or you are working on projects of your own right now, I would love to see them and you can totally post them on this um, Facebook page or um, you can send me an email if you'd like to. I'm at romandamadison at gmail.com or just send me a message on Facebook. Um, I love seeing those projects and um, being excited with you as, as you've created them as well. So I hope you have a great week and um, right now I'm planning on to still meet um, same time 830 Central um, next Sunday night um, with another Facebook Live um, post and hopefully I can gather gather myself a, a little bit um, to at least do a couple of different projects for next week. But um, I will see you soon. Have a good week everybody. Bye-bye.